Last time on a comically long review. Issue number five is really a step back up to the level of quality I was expecting from this series. It's not like issue four was bad, I still gave it a four, it's just that this was even better. There was a lot more action, and the Rangers and the League worked together really well. The only downside, and sadly enough it was a pretty big one, was Alpha's conversation with Brainiac. They really struggled to find Alpha's voice, not really getting anywhere close. The things Alpha was saying would sound better coming from Zordon than from Alpha himself. However, issue number 5 still gets a 4.5 out of 5. And now, the conclusion. Now the cover to issue 6, this is really what we've been building up to. The Justice League and the Power Rangers in their Zords charging into battle together. If anything, the background is a little bland, just yellowish sunset summer type scene. Though it does have some clouds, so that's cool I guess. We open on what really should have been a full page spread, maybe a two page spread. Find a way to just do something else on the first page. The Rangers and the League flying all around the battlefield, fighting Z-Putties and, um, B-Bots, I guess. While in the background, a giant Alpha 5 punches a space worm in the jaw. Alpha does one of those one punch per word things while going, I, yai, yai. But the first I is spelled A-Y-E instead of A-I. Therefore, any lines I read as Alpha from here on in are going to feature a Scottish accent. Anyway, Alpha punches the beast and it falls into a building, sending some rubble falling. Wonder Woman calls Superman, though since Alpha screams, No! It seems like they're worried about Superman? They fly over and catch... something? Seriously, we see some small pieces of rubble falling off the building, but Soup and Wendy catch like half of the roof. Alpha is apologetic. Oh, Power Rangers, I could have crushed those people, or you. I'm sorry, sorry. The Rangers are understanding, though. I mean, this is his first time punching a Leviathan. However, it reminds Jason that they should get Angel Grove a safe distance away. Flash says he can get it far away in a, well, Flash, but Zack stops him. Then Jason points out that the command center isn't actually in there, meaning that's not where Zordon is. One, duh, I pointed that out earlier, the dome would have needed to be a lot bigger to encompass the command center as well. Two, stay consistent with the rangers. The art is jumping around a lot. Yes, I'll grant you that Jason could have walked over and realized that, but we don't see that, and Zack just said, wait, and then let Jason finish the thought. We then see where the command center and Zordon are. They're in another bottle. That's hanging around Zed's neck. He's standing near the Zords, which are still controlled by Brainiac. At first, I thought he had grown and was the same size as the Zords, and the fact that he was wearing a necklace that had the command center in that kind of smaller of a size would make a little more sense. But a few pages later, we see that Zed is just normal size. It was just a perspective trick. So the command center was shrunk way down. I do get that it's just one building versus an entire city, but that still seems like it's tinier than usual. By the by, on the next page there's a Snickers ad that is made to look like a Justice League comic book with the exact same art style as this comic. So at first I glanced over to the next page and thought we were getting Snickers product placement in this comic. I mean hey, Krispy Kreme worked out for the movie, right? Next, we get kind of an unfortunately common trope, a little worse than the show. Don't tell, telling us while showing us the opposite. Batman says they can't hold the grunts off much longer while literally punching the head off of a B-Bot. Looks like you're doing just fine to me. He calls Cyborg for an update and Kimberly answers for some reason, relaying the request to Cyborg and Billy. Blah blah, techno blah 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 blah, multimodal reflection sorting and all that, but Cyborg says they're done and they can now let the bad guys through to them. The B-Bots, they call them drones, but I actually like B-Bots better, overrun Cyborg and Brainiac takes him over again. And that is exactly what he wanted. See, Brainiac may be a 12th level intelligence, though Billy is really starting to suspect that he just made that term up. 
but he couldn't resist a nice cybernetic Trojan horse. Billy and Cyborg studied Brainiac's arm and developed a virus that would take out the AI. The virus is programmed to delete Brainiac. The Bebots all fall deactivated and the Zords are freed from his control. Lord Zed says, no! But he's not even looking at the Zords, he's looking at Alpha fighting one of the monsters. Maybe he realized how ridiculously amazing that all is and he just couldn't handle it. Anyway, he takes two growth grenades and slams them together. Um, did anyone know he could do that? He just made himself a bigger target. Hit him! Zed responds by zapping the crud out of them and Superman. No. Magic. Superman. Clark! Why are you saying one word at a time. And P.S. Oh yeah, you really care about Clark. Say, is that kryptonite in your pocket or are you just happy to see him? Zed moves in to stab Superman, but the Megazord slides in for the save. So Zed is just regular giant monster size? Why did he need two grenades then? Did he have to have two to grow since he's already so powerful? Weird. Alpha, showing off a huge metal set of ballistics, <laughs> runs up and shoves Zed in the back. Creatively, this swings the command center up towards the Megazord and they grab it. They hand it to Alpha for safekeeping. Alpha, do not spike this one. Zed punches the Megazord in the face and the rangers taunt him. Was that supposed to hurt? It takes some adjustment, doesn't it? Suddenly having limbs that weigh more than buildings? Maybe if you had some time to get used to it, this would be a fair fight. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Zed has grown proportionally. He doesn't have to punch harder since his arms weigh more because all of those red exposed outside of his body muscles all grew the same size too. Zed's punching strength would be just the same as it was when he's small, just scaled up proportionally. Anyway, they tell him he doesn't have the time to learn as they sucker punch him. They say the thing about being giant is that there's nowhere to hide. Um, no, there kind of is. Big buildings, mountain ranges, huge sinkholes. It's actually a lot of places to hide. You came for our planet. You missed. Your words cause me curious mind pain. Seriously, Rangers, if you're going to try for a sick burn, at least have it make a little bit of sense. Zed actually seems to agree, though, spiking his staff and blasting the Megazord back. When they get up, Zed is gone. Wonder Woman spots him on the ground, having shrunk down and running away. Run away! Run away! Run away! Run away! Wonder Woman says she's got him, but Kim teleports down and says, no, allow me. She pulls Green Arrow's bow and uses the boxing glove arrow, declaring it the most satisfying thing ever as she stands over a TKO'd Zed. Later. The Rangers in League are preparing to resize Angel Grove. Apparently, this has to be done in the exact precise position that it was originally, which kind of makes sense because of seismic stuff and science. Billy's not too happy then that Flash's suggestion for placement is a little to the left. So he asks the guy with the supervision what he thinks. His suggestion? A little to the left? Anyway, they blast it with the skull from Brainiac's ship and the city grows back. Woo! The epilogue! <laughs> the Rangers in League and their civilian identities gather at the juice bar. Bulk and Skull spot the Rangers and ask them if they ran away during the trouble, but a glare from Bruce Wayne sends them packing. He orders a strawberry... something, and asks for the full check, but Zack tells him he can't pay. Why not? He's a rich man. Because he's got a $100 bill with President Lex Luthor on it. Yeah, that's a thing that actually happened. It's a funny gag, until unhelpful people like me realize that Zack interrupted Bruce with his hand in his jacket pocket so he couldn't have seen the money and known that it wouldn't have worked. Also, it kind of makes me wonder something. If Bruce had tried to use a credit card instead, would it work? You would say no at first, 
But maybe there is a Bruce Wayne in this world that just never became Batman because the Waynes moved to Angel Grove to get in on the booming building reconstruction business. Everybody suited back up to say goodbye for some reason. The Rangers morphing and removing their helmets and the League in their costumes. I kind of get it for the Justice League. They're going to fly back home and get off the ship. People might see them. In fact, that was why Jason wanted the Power Rangers to wear costumes for the battle. But the Rangers really had no reason to morph. They're not going anywhere. Zordon makes sure that the League will find homes for the other cities and thanks them for their help. Kim asks if she can keep the boxing glove arrow, and Billy gives Cyborg a Power Rangers communicator, so, and I think this is kind of a cool touch, the League can call on the Power Rangers for help if they need them. Cyborg, of course, returns the offer, and of course, thus far, nada. I mean, I think the League would be a huge help for the Rangers with Lord Draken, especially considering that the Justice League's power has no connection to the morphing grid, at least that we know of. By the way, how can Zordon even open a portal to their dimension to make travel regular? I mean, I guess the formulas and stuff they discovered with CERN in the DC universe would help, but they needed an entire particle collider and the Dragon Dagger to make that happen. But nonetheless, we do get a sequel hook. The Rangers say goodbye to the League. Alpha goes, Aye, yay, yay, aye, yay, yay. I am Brainiac. Issue number six is definitely the wrap-up. Lots of awesome action and fighting, but in the end, everything felt a little bit anticlimactic. Alpha grows big and kind of beats up on some giant space worms, then he just hangs on to the command center. Zed grows big and can't handle being beaten up by the ranger's basic megazord, so he shrinks, runs away, and gets knocked out, and hey, that was never resolved. What did they do with Lord Zed anyway? Then Angel Grove just gets resized with zero resolution to Zack's family drama. The League has a juice, and we say goodbye. Alpha is Brainiac, just in case this sells well enough to get a sequel. Except that this series was, technically speaking, cancelled after issue 4, and resolicited for a later run to finish it out, so... I don't think that's going to happen, unfortunately. Issue number six gets a four out of five. Overall, I really enjoyed this miniseries. It's written very well. You have the classic superhero brawl caused by a classic superhero misunderstanding before the two teams come together to fight a common threat. We spend a little time in each universe, and we just see both of these teams at their best. The only bad side that really stuck out to me was little tiny bits of confusion, single bit errors I've called them in the television series. Mainly the writers tending to forget which ranger had been talking or doing something. In a funny way, it kind of reminded me of the original Super Nintendo Power Rangers video game, where the rangers were all just recolored sprites of each other, male and female. It seemed like the writers were looking at those and just couldn't tell the rangers apart sometimes. And weirdly enough, that's something that actually got worse as the series went on instead of better. But all in all, this was a fantastic story, a great miniseries, and if we were to get more of this team up between the two teams, I would be all over it. Speaking of more, next time we're going to get more universes as we step into another one. With the recent sale of the Power Rangers franchise to Hasbro, many fans had their hopes reignited for a sequel to the 2017 Lionsgate Power Rangers movie. However, how many of you heroes know that we already got a sequel to that movie? Tune in next time for part one of my review of the graphic novel sequel to the 2017 Power Rangers movie, Power Rangers Aftershock. That is going to do it for another comically long review. Thank you, heroes, so much, as always, for watching. In the comments below, let me know what you thought about not just these three issues, but the entire Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Justice League comic series in general, as well as my review of it. And let me take a little pause in my normal outro here to also say... I greatly appreciate those of you who have told me that you have been keeping up with comics like these, like this series, by watching my reviews. That does mean a lot to me. 
However, I absolutely have to stress, please support these comics financially. I think it's even more important for a series, a mini series, I should say, like this, as opposed to the ongoing Power Rangers comics, which are now both well over 10 issues. Go Go Power Rangers is approaching 15. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers is in the 30s, so those have some staying power to keep going. But crossovers like this, it's not such a sure thing. This series was almost canceled due to low sales. So sales of these comics are important. You can get them very cheaply on Comixology. And if you are watching this video, you can access comics on Comixology to read them and support the line financially. And if you can, just get the physical copies. I think it's cool to have physical copies and collect them and be able to read them anywhere at any time. I was reading some of the comic archive that was recently released by Boom on the airplane to California. So it's good to have physical copies of things sometimes. Please support the line financially. I'm not trying to replace the comics by doing these videos. I'm just doing reviews of them that try to encourage you, since they're good, to go out and buy them. All that being said, please subscribe to the channel to see all of my videos, including these, a comically long review videos. Ring the bell, make sure to get your notifications set up so you get notified whenever I post these brand new videos. And if you really enjoyed this review and would like to support the channel financially, head over to digitaltipjar.com slash orangerangervid, toss your tip change in the jar, and I'd be grateful for whatever lands in there. Until next time, heroes, may the power protect you. The Justice League, the Power Ra uh, the Justice League, and the Power Rangers Swords. It is, isn't it? Oh, some of those. T I whatever. <laughs> However, it reminds Jason that they should get Angel Grove a safe distance away. Flash says he can get it far away. At first, I thought he was the same size as the Zords, the, 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 with the exact same. Lord Zez says no, but he's not looking at the Zords but Alpha is fighting at what, what, what? Zed responds by zapping the crud out of them and Superman. No magic, uh, what? Was that supposed to hurt? It takes some adjustment, doesn't it? Suddenly, it takes some adjustment, doesn't it? Zed punches the Megazord in the, I, and I should take the opportunity to see who's talking. But nonetheless, that is something of a sequel hook. The Rangers, oh, farts. Except that this series was actually, technically speaking, technically. Overall, I really enjoyed this series. Yeah, you know what? I'm only holding three issues of it, so. The two teams come together to the under to the. It's written very well. You have the classic superhero misunderstanding leading to the classic superhero brawl before the two teams come together to an understanding in order to face a shared threat. You know the problem with recording here versus recording over there? Over there, I can just steal a glance at the TV. Over here, it's halfway across the room to my right, and I can't really see it, and you're gonna notice if I look over. You have the classic superhero team brawl. Batteries right now, we gotta wrap this up. The only real downside that sticks out in my mind are these little bits of confusion, single bit errors as I've called them, such as times as the Rangers forgetting, or the, uh, Tune in next time for my review 